Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Engineering News Senior Deputy Editor Keith Campbell reports on how local airlines are meeting the challenges they face in the aviation industry today. The current economic environment is not great from an airline point of view. Local Group Commer operates two brands, British Airways in Southern Africa and low-cost carrier Kalula. Commer CEO Eric Fenter explains the challenges facing domestic airlines in South Africa and the region. Well, the big challenge that's really hit us in the last year has been the devaluation of the RAND. We've seen over the previous 12 months now it's devalued by around 25%. And that obviously impacts our fuel price directly. So the fuel price has gone up by 25% immediately and we are also seeing an impact on our maintenance costs and on various other costs relating to foreign uh, uh, suppliers such as our global distribution charges, etc. So uh, obviously, you know, the only way to deal with this is to continue pursuing further efficiencies and some of it has to be passed on to the customer, unfortunately. Um, the consequence of this has been that we have seen a continued shrinkage of the domestic market. Uh, it shrunk by around 5% in the prior 12-month period and it's still shrinking by 5%, so it's becoming a compounding effect now, which is of some concern. Um, but yeah, the, the reality is that it's a cost escalation that has to be dealt with. Now, uh, as I mentioned originally, the one aspect of this is obviously you know, trying to pass some of it back onto the market, but that's never been a, a, a total solution. Uh, if we've seen over the years that the cost index of domestic airlines since 2001 has gone up by 168%, the CPI index has gone up by 98% by comparison, and the airfares on the on the two brands we're operating, British Airways and Kaluda, um, each has gone up by around 30% over the same period. So it's very clear that one cannot actually pass on sufficient quantity of, of the cost escalation uh, into the market, and the only solution is therefore to increase the efficiency of the operation. Now, the most obvious way to do this is to try and spread more of the cost over a larger base of, of customers. Um, when you're sitting with a situation with a stagnant or shrinking market, you're not going to simply pick up a larger volume of customers, so therefore you have to restructure your fleet and your, the size of your aircraft, the efficiency of your aircraft to deal with the matter. And for the last uh, 15 years ago, so Kame has slowly but surely been upgrading the size of aircraft, the efficiency of aircraft, and that cycle of constantly upgrading aircraft is the crux of Kame's survival in this market. Um, and really staying with the most efficient aircraft that one can afford. So we're now uh, putting our first 737-800 into the British Airways fleet. It's been operating for a few months already. And that really is the next step in moving the, our domestic British Airways fleet into the next level of efficiency. Uh, there are two aspects that are delivered on this aircraft in terms of efficiency. And the first is uh, the kind of obvious one people think about uh, is the fuel burn and we're getting around 6% lower fuel burn per flight out of the 800 compared to the 300 they've replaced. But the real big number comes in the seating capacity of the 800. Uh, we're looking at about 165 seats compared to 117 on the 300. So that's about a 40% increase in the number of seats. And that makes the really big difference because you're talking about 40% more seats for 6% less fuel. So your cost per seat is coming down by around 46%. Um, Sounds great, but when you've uh, been hit with 25% fuel increase this year, we had a, we had similar increases last year. Uh, you know that, that total saving per seat gets sucked up very very fast. But it does mean that we've managed to stay in business when we've seen this massive cost escalation and relatively small airfare escalations. Other news making headlines this week: Camac Energy lists on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. T Systems acquires Intervate as it seeks to boost growth in new market segments and the Hyundai Training Academy aims to improve the automotive industry. US-based oil and gas exploration company Camac Energy recently listed on the main board of the JSE following nearly 18 months of discussions, making various benefits available to South African investors. We started exploration in 
1991 in Africa. And we were the first uh, indigenous company that was uh, afforded the opportunity to invest in deep water, West Africa. In fact, we were uh, the first one to discover oil in deep water, West Africa. Um, our partners at that time were BP and Start Oil of Norway. So for us, we are an exploration, development, uh, and producing uh, oil and gas company. Dutch information technology business T-System South Africa has acquired local enterprise information management specialist company Intervate to boost its growth in new market segments and its capabilities in various IT areas. So that, that was really the area that we started to focus on was to say how do we, we still need to bolster an existing business to ensure growth and driving the core ERPs and making sure it moves to the next level to cloud etc. But at the same time, how do we make sure we bring in collaboration, enterprise information management, big data, mobility, and really bolster the capability? And that's really, really the areas that we started to focus on. And, um, and Intervate really fit that profile of a company um, in terms of offerings, technology partners, as well as skills and capability that, that they bring on board. Power manufacturer Hyundai Automotive South Africa launched the Hyundai Training Academy in Bedford View, Johannesburg in November last year to address the serious shortage of available skills in South Africa within the automotive industry. One of the most challenging areas in, within the motor industry, and, and it's a, talked about quite a lot um, in this, the, the upper circles in the motor industry, is the shortage of skill within the motor industry. And we're talking specifically about technicians. At the, the current moment, uh, from various sources, the average age of technicians is about 45. And uh, these uh, people are getting older and we're battling to get fresh young blood into the industry. Uh, so with the result is, uh, as uh, Hano Automata South Africa, we've come up with initiatives in order to address this. And first and foremost is to get scholars at school level interested in our motor industry. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.